No mai, haere mai. Welcome, I'm Bruce Munro, and with me is International Relations Specialist, Professor Robert Patman, and this is Global Insight. Ukraine's surprise counter-invasion of Russia, launched a week ago, has captured hundreds of square kilometres. Is it a genius move or a foolhardy one? Welcome, Robert. We're on Bruce. Thank you. How has Vladimir Putin's regime responded to the surprise assault on its Kursk region? Slowly. Um, and I think that may have been anticipated by the Zelensky government and why they, in fact, tried this incursion. Uh, this is an authoritarian regime, so Mr. Putin has to have the last word on every major decision. And um, on the 7th of August, that's the day after the invasion, uh, Valery Gerasimov, who is the commander in chief, reported to a very tense looking Putin that they had stopped the incursion. They clearly hadn't. And uh, as a result, uh, on the 11th of August, five days into the crisis, Mr. Putin took the first really decisive step, he appointed uh, Alexander uh, Bortnikov, who is the head of the FBS, the security uh, service, federal Se security service in Russia, intelligence. Uh, he's running what's called a counter-terrorist operation. So they're not admitting they're at war and they've been invaded. It's a, it's a terrorist provocation that's going on in Kursk at the moment. But to answer your question, I think there will be a point where under Bortnikov, who's got a reputation for ruthlessness but high efficiency, uh, I think they will rally and really um, they will be in the process of mobilising troops to confront what seems to be a continuing incursion. Apparently none of Ukraine's allies knew what was planned. Do you think this is a, a wise strategic move, the invasion, or a foolhardy one? Firstly, you're quite right to say that basically uh, the operation was kept closely under wraps and that was impressive because it's very difficult for any military, particularly uh, a liberal democracy, to keep things under wraps. And it seems that even people uh, in certain sections of the military high up didn't know until the day it was launched. Um, interestingly, Russian intelligence did detect uh, the formation and um, concentration of Ukrainian troops on the other side of the Kursk border two weeks before. The information was passed on, but Gerasimov decided not to worry the president with this, and they probably thought that the Ukrainians were mobilizing to defy an anticipated Russian incursion. So uh, that was, it. but coming back to your question, is this a, a wise or strategic move? It depends on your judgment. Many um, Western commentators believe there's a real risk with this move, <clears throat> that it might be a good short-term move but not work out well in the long term. The big fear is, of course, that Mr. Putin will mobilise, being a bigger country, mobilise reserves of troops to stop the incursion and then push it back across the border, but in the process um, uh, kill large numbers of Ukrainian soldiers and also damage equipment which they need for the Eastern Front, where the Russians occupy about 20% of the Ukrainian territory. So there is a concern that uh, once the Russians recover from this shock, they will assert their superiority. However, there's a, you know, the Zelensky government doesn't share that risk assessment. It believes that the Putin government is much weaker uh, than it's been depicted by the United States. Uh, for a long time, uh, a, a concern within um, Kyiv has been that the West has inflated and exaggerated Putin's power. And so far, their judgment seems to be vindicated. They have, uh, they have captured, according to most reports, more than a thousand square kilometers of territory, and the operation is little over a week now. Um, and there's no sign of the military momentum uh, deceasing. Not only that, they've captured over 2,000 soldiers, they killed large numbers, and uh, what's really worrying is that large numbers of Russians are surrendering. And they're also being received very well by the occupants of Kursk, and they're handing out humanitarian aid there. So this is, so why has Mr. Um, Zelensky embarked on this? I think the calculation is, first of all, that 
that, that Mr. Putin was what not well placed to defend that particular border. Secondly, he's interested in the political effects of this military incursion. Uh, remember, we recall we spoke last year, Bruce, uh, about Prigozhin's uh, attempt in a military coup. Uh, there'll be deep concerns in Moscow. First of all, that the Ukraine war hasn't worked out war well for the Russians. It's been a it's been a catastrophe actually. And secondly, um, this is a regime which can't actually defend an international uh, border, internationally recognised border. So you can imagine that certain elements of the military which warned against the Ukraine invasion are now extremely concerned. And um, I think what we could see is a climate, what Mr. Putin, what Mr. Zelensky is hoping is to contribute to a climate in which there may be another challenge to Mr. Putin's leadership. Interesting. Does Ukraine's invasion, however, does that weaken its moral high ground and possibly even undermine the support it has from allies like the United States, United Kingdom, Germany? No, I don't think it weakens its high ground. Mr. The Slensky regime said they've got no intention of staying in Kursk. But what they have got now is a useful bargaining chip in any negotiations going forward. If you withdraw from our sovereign territory, we withdraw from yours. This, this is an audacious move. Some commentators have compared it with the Tet Offensive in 1968 when the Viet Cong turned the tables on the Americans and stunned them by launching a direct assault on American positions around Saigon. Um, also, some commentators have compared it with the shock effect that Hamas had on Israel in their um, incursion of the 7th of October last year. So it, it's an audacious move. I don't think it surrenders the moral high ground. If anything, it is changing the narrative that Russia is much more vulnerable than Western countries have indicated. Scholars and diplomats have consistently, not all of them, but many of them have consistently urged on the Zelensky government to go for a land for peace deal. And I think uh, this move has actually undermined that to some extent. Uh, it's given Mr. Putin quite considerable leverage in any negotiation. And I think he also has said to Western allies, you've underestimated us. Your narrative was that we would inevitably be defeated or have to sue for peace um, at the behest of a much bigger adversary. And I think Zelensky is challenging this. And uh, I, I think also, uh, in a sense, it may encourage, there are signs that Germany in particular is now encouraged to release weapon systems it previously denied um, Ukraine on the basis it would escalate. Mr. Putin always threatened nuclear weapons if anyone interfered with his, his invasion of Ukraine. Well, now he's getting invaded and there's no sign that this red line has been crossed and he's resorting to nuclear weapons. Uh, he's being humiliated at the moment and his regime is being thoroughly humiliated. And so uh, I, Mr. Putin knows, and you only had to look at his nervous countenance in the televised pictures, that this can't go on for too long uh, without someone deciding they can be a stronger and better leader than Putin in Russia. And right. so this is a shrewd move by Zelensky and it strikes right at the heart of the vulnerabilities of this regime. Putin has promised what he's calling a worthy response, I mm. think it is a worthy response. Ukraine's counter-invasion, has this changed the course of the conflict? It's too early to say and we can't rule out the, the prospect of a crushing retaliatory strike by uh, the Russian army. But I think, as the, you know, the problem is time is not on Mr. Putin's side. And every day that goes by, the um, Ukrainians show no signs of retreating across the border. They're mobilizing more troops in Belgorod, outside, on, the, on the border of Belgorod. They've already seized part of Belgorod. And so, the, you know, if you, if you look at this on a map, um, there's no signs that they've just sort of identified a piece of territory they want and they're going to dig in there. They're, they're fanning outwards. In fact, they're turning the old Russian adage against the Russians that if you've got a bayonet in your hand and you encounter mush, you keep going. If you encounter steel, you draw back. Well, at the moment, they're encountering mush. So they keep, keep, they're, they're keeping on going. There's no signs that this incursion is diminishing or losing momentum. Thank you, Robert. Thank you. And thank you for watching. Catch us next time on Global Insight. Kaki te Adam.